Hi there, this is Anna Rivera, the itinerant librarian. And this time I'm doing one of those uh, YouTube video response videos, and it's to the prompt asking folks what their last 10 decks were. I'm replying to the video I found at Just Bear Tarot, who I'm sure found it someplace else, and you know, you follow the chain of replies. I will link down below to the video that. I first saw the prompt at, and these are the last 10 decks that I have acquired. Um, I actually went back through my tarot journal where I usually make notes of uh, when I acquire a deck and how much I paid for it and where I acquired it and so on. So I w that's what helped me put this list together. Um, I could have done 10 tarot decks and 10 oracle decks maybe, but that would have meant going back quite a bit in time. Um, unlike certain folks out there, I don't buy decks every month or every week, or I sure as heck don't get sent decks every month or every week, so this goes back uh, months at a time. So I went ahead and did the last 10 in, in reverse chronological order, so this is current as of August 20th, 2023, which is when I checked. So without further ado, these are the last 10 decks I have added to my collection with a little bit of commentary, maybe something like that. Uh, so you see me looking down, it's because I got my notes. Okay, so the most recent acquisition to my collection at this time is the the Fairies Oracle by Brian Freud. Uh, Freud. I got I've uh, been wanting this one for quite a while, and I finally got it. I was basically ordering two other decks uh, at the time, and you know how it is. Uh, you get free shipping if you add anything extra, so the price was good enough that I could add the Fairies Oracle to the list. Um, the other two decks uh, that I was acquiring at the time were backups, so I'm not going to comment on that. I was quite impressed with this set, actually. The Fairies Oracle came with the cards. Let me show a little bit. Oops. Uh, looks like that's what the cards looks like, and the backing of the cards. I'm sure plenty of people have seen these. Um, but one thing I was impressed with the kit, aside from the deck, is that it comes with a really nice hardcover book. Look at this. See? Nice. So this is the kind of thing that's going to look very nice on the shelf. Uh, looks like very informative. Uh, got illustrations of the cards throughout. I'm going to be looking forward to reading this one. And as soon as I work with the deck, as always, there'll be a review of it on my blog. Feel free to check that out. And this is the Fairies Oracle. Uh, so this was in August. The next uh, two decks I acquired towards the end of June. Um, that was one of those months when Llewellyn was having one of their 35% sales. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Tarot was a good time to buy things. Anytime you can get a $30, $35 deck kit for about 20 is a good day to me. Excuse me. So my next two decks uh, were the Tarot Vampires by Harrington. And it comes in one of those nice Llewellyn decks. Uh, here's the companion book. Let me highlight a couple of the cards real quick. Um, on first impression, uh, for me, this deck is kind of like a more of a pop culture vampire deck compared to, let's say, the Tarot B, for example, which is very gothic and very dark. This is kind of more the deck for the Blade and Buffy the Vampire Slayer generation. Nothing wrong with that. I happen to like Blade quite a bit, um, but I'm just saying it comes with kind of contrast. A uh, couple of the cards. Here's the Fool. Here's Temperance. Here's that deck. Here's some of the Miners. The Miners are fully illustrated. The Nine of Wands. Ooh, that's nice. Four of Swords. And this is what the back looks like. It's not reversing, but it's very nice. By the way, the, the roses kind of remind me also of the Tarot of Vampires by Ian Daniels. This is the Tarot of Vampires by Charles Harrington. By the way, Charles Harrington is the guy who wrote the book for the, the little book for Tarot V, and I think he did a very good job on that one. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one works out. Next one is the Trick or Treat Tarot by Barbara Moore with art by Jonathan Hunt. Again, one of those nice little willing kits. It comes with a companion book. 
let's have a look at some of the cards real quick. I am looking forward to this one for the next Halloween season, probably. Here's the pool. Such a nice deck, if you ask me. Here's the Hermit. Five of Wands. This is also fully illustrated. Four Cups. That's what the back of the deck looks like. It is reversible. There you go. So this is the Trick or Treat Tarot. Concept by Barbara Moore. Illustrations by Jonathan Hunt. Published by our friends on the Llewellyn. So that was in June. A little bit further back, also at the end of June, I was visiting Half Price Books, and amazingly that week they had a pretty good selection of used decks. I love buying used decks, so I took advantage of that. So here's what I acquired that day. Next up on the line, if I can get the box open, is are the Mystical Healing Cards uh, by Ina Segal. These are published by Rockpool. Actually, this ones were new, so they, they, they had them on sale, amazingly enough. They come in a hard box, back of the book. Very nice cards. Here's uh, one of them, Access Clear Thinking. This is the back. So these are the Mystical Healing cards. Uh, right from the back. So the next two are used. Uh, so. I managed to get the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. I already have the Kuan Yin Oracle, and actually, as of this video, I'm using it as my weekly Oracle card draw. So I was very happy to find this one as well. It comes in the box. You got a companion, nice companion book. The cards. Let me just highlight a couple. Here's number one Above You, the Lantern Dancer. This is one of those decks that has cards that are horizontal, like this one. This is number two, Her Joy Overcomes Gravity. That's not nice. This is uh, the back of the cards, really reversible. I know some people gripe if, if cards, you know, are horizontal. Don't bother, doesn't bother me. Um, so I think it looks quite nice. So that's the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. Uh, next, this is kind of a rare one, or at least rare for me. This is the Alcid Egyptian Oracle cards, which I got for a very good price. They're used, but they're in great condition. Um, they seemed interesting, so that's why I got them. I do like Egyptian themed things, which is a little companion book. It's published also by Rockpool. I can highlight a couple of the cards. The nice thing about it is, is they're used, the box was open, so I was actually able to look at the cards in the store before I bought them, which is kind of a nice thing. Uh, Amun Ra, number one. Hathor, card number 14. Horus, uh, number 15. The Nile River, number 25. What the back of the cards looks like. Not quite reversible, but still very nice. Oh, yes, that is the Osset Egyptian Oracle cards from Rockpool. And also, during that trip to half price books, I, I managed to acquire a copy of the Robin Wood Tarot. This is published by Llewellyn. The copyright on this one is 1991. The price was fairly decent as well. This is one of those classic decks that it seems every other elder in the community has. And a lot of people also talk about it if um, they have, let's say, the Wildwood Tarot, for example, or the um, Sagura Craft. Very often this one gets talked about in the same sentence. So a couple of the cards real quick. Let's see the pool on that one. The magician. The Miners. It is fully illustrated. This is the two of coins. I do notice the miners only have the number. You have to kind of be able to tell the symbol because there's no more, there's no words or text. This is the nine of pentacles. 
see the pentacles are up on that gate back there, but otherwise just a number. But it is fairly close to Rider Waite Smith, so if you read Rider Waite Smith, you should be just fine. Seven of Wands, that's a sci-fi very classic. The Queen of Wands, very nice. This is the back of the deck. It is reversible, as you can see. So this is the classic Robin Wood Tarot. I've been wanting to get that one for a while, and I'm happy I finally found it at a relatively good price. So moving right along, I'll put this, get this out of the way. Sorry about that. Just got a cute little box. Let's see. And then for our next decks, we're going all the way back to March, because that's the last time I went. Um, these two decks, I did pay retail, but it's because I bought them at a esoteric shop up in uh, Lexington. So, you know, support the local business, that kind of thing. And so I went ahead and bought those two. Um, one of them was the Tower of the Owls. I like owls, so I was happy to get this one. Uh, it's one of those little Beck Llewellyn kits. A nice companion book. And it has that Llewellyn trend now that where everything is in color inside the book. And let me highlight some of the cards for folks. There we go. Um, there's the fool on that one. Well, the magician I have to show you because that's the, the, the image they use for the cover also. There we go. The miners are fully illustrated. This is the Three of Swords, for example. The Four of Cups. The Page of Pentacles. That's the back of the card. It's not quite reversible, but it's still very nice. This is the Tarot of the Owls. So the author is Pamela Chen. The artist is Elizabeth Alba on this one, who has done, I believe, the Everyday Witch Tarot and a couple other things. So if you like her style, you'll probably like this deck. I know I do. And then the other deck that I bought full price at the Esoteric Shop was the Notoria. The Tarot in Light. By Fabio Lestrani. I pretty much like anything Fabio Lestrani. So, and I already have the Goetia as well, so I figured get the companion and now I have both. I'll be honest, um, the Goetia and the Notoria, I admit, are decks that kind of make me feel a little bit overwhelmed with all that esoteric symbolism. So, I'm not sure when I'm going to be ready to use them. I feel like I got to do some serious in depth study. For these, and that's okay, we'll get there. Uh, this is a Los Carabao deck, so it comes in, uh, in a little, nice little box, right? Comes with a little companion book. Um, it is one of those books that's in multiple languages, but it does have quite a, a bit in the English section. So. The liner or cover card with Notoria, let me highlight some of the cards. I like the Goetia. This one is in color, which already I like it a little bit better because uh, those of us who are half blind, so the, some of the grays in the Goetia are kind of rough to see. So anyhow, here is uh, the King of Wands. There is a numbering, but that's not necessarily in the traditional order. Number two, for example, is the Page of Wands. Um, the name is Heliel. And it's got then the number of the number of the card, the name of the character or angel. I think the angel. And then it's got the the actual number from tarot. So this, if you did the minor arcana, the page would be eleven. So that's what that eleven is there for. The name of the tarot character. In this case, page of wands. And there's some esoteric symbols here underneath. So yeah, you get quite a bit of. Symbolism and detail on these cards, definitely. Very nice. Let me go down the line. Caliel is the Ten of Pentacles. Very interesting. The 
Sierra Cell is the title ones. The art is Greg Um The Two of Pentacles, the 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 the, 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 the ah, yeah. Butcher that one. But isn't that nice? Look at that. Like look at that. Oh, that, that was that was that moved. Um, this is the back of the cards. It is reversible. So this is the Notoria title in light by Fabio Listrani. Published by Los Carabeo. I really like Los Carabeo decks. They do put some pretty good work, I think. And then the last of the ten, we've already made it through like that. Time sure flies when you're having fun. Um, this was another find at Half Price Books that I got for a very good deal again. And it's the Chronicles of Destiny Fortune cards. Comes in this nice big box that kind of looks like a book on the shelf. And I admit, I picked these up because again, the box was open. I was able to look at the cards and it looked interesting. So it, the box kind of opened. Nice little ribbons to hold it. Nice, some nice touches on this one. They didn't pay too much for it. The art is great, and it's one of those decks that killed it. My goodness, uh, they don't make decks like that anymore. So let me just show some of the cards. Uh, this is number one, the Enchanted Emporium. Number 10, the Adventure. Number 26, Sorrow. Number 35, Shooting Star. Yeah, I don't know. Here's the back of the cards. Not reversible, but very nice in my opinion. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, you get in the box, you get the back, and it also has a small companion box. Not the front, the back. The entries, you get the card. The moral of the story down here, and then you get the description and the card, what they call the card definition, that's the interpretation it looks like. So a very nice little package. And there you have it. Those are the last 10 decks that I have added to my collection throughout the year, basically. I mean, this goes all the way back to March. Hope you find that interesting. Uh, if you like it, as usual, give it a like below and subscribe if you want to see more stuff. Uh, and in the words of Walter Mercado, mucha paz, mucho amor. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.